and kept the button pressed. I really need a modern oscilloscope with some memory function. Send me if you have a spare one. Uh, nope. Good news! Bango just offered to support me with a free scope! Yes! <laughs> Let's do a quick unboxing. In today's episode we will take a look at the digital to analog converters built in in the ESP32 and how to use them to use the scope as a vector display. But first of all a big thank you to Banggood for sending me that scope. You can find the links to Banggood and to the scope below. They sell all kinds of electronics. And with my special coupon code MEASURE you will get even 15% off until the end of the month. I picked that scope since I like to have something in the 100 MHz range with 4 probes. And I show you why now. Developing the camera series I was able to debug the frame timings and also the I2C interface. Even if I would have space on my bench for my old analog scope, there is no option to record the signal into the memory and take a closer look. Here you can see the I2C slope with the internal pull-ups. And here with the 4.7k ohms. It's quite a difference in signal quality. This scope has also the capability to decode I2C. You can see the camera does not recognize the signal. The acknowledge pulldown is missing. Here it works. But the decoding features in the 100 MHz option are trial and can be unlocked by paying extra. Or using another method like Dave Jones did on the EEV block. Now let's take a look at the digital to analog converters of the ESP32. It has two 8-bit ducts built in. Using a duct we can convert a digital value to an actual analog voltage. Not like PWM signals which just generate low and high signals which average out to a specific voltage if we don't look close enough. I just watched my old tutorials on DUCs and PWMs and I'm really surprised how good those are. Check them out if you are not familiar with those concepts. I put the links in the description and also a link to the project page where you can find all the details on the parts and also the source codes. The DUCs are really fast and can also be used with I2S. It's a bummer that those of the ESP are just 8 bit wide. They are probably similar to those I made in my old tutorial. The ducts are hard wired to GPIO pins 25 and 26. I tried to keep those pins free in the last episode of the camera tutorials so we can use those as well. We can use the oscilloscope in XY mode as a vector display. On the analog scope the cathode ray would bend in XY direction and draw lines on the fluorescent screen. On a digital scope those XY samples are accumulated and displayed as a raster image. I have used this technique in my synthesizer tutorial but I didn't really explain it well since it was off topic. Wiring is simple, we don't need extra components. Simply connect the probes to GPIO 25 and 26 and the ground. My scope is switched to XY mode like this. And then run a sketch. The Arduino integration of the ESP32 includes the ESP driver for the digital to analog converters. We simply initialize the DUCs in the setup using DUC output enable, where DUC channel 1 and 2 are predefined constants for the two channels, and use DUC output voltage to write the XY values. The values are valid between 0 and 255 for 8 bits and are outputting voltages between 0 and VCC at the pins respectively. Since the digital scope accumulates the values it needs a hint when to start accumulating. This is done by the trigger. I simply write 255 to both signals at the end of my drawing and use one of the signals as a trigger. With this method I obviously have to stay below this value to get a stable image. I also set the trigger to falling slope to be triggered when I start drawing.
still, the update rate of the image on the scope is quite slow. This is caused by the amount of samples it has to process. We can reduce the sample count like this. Sixty K gives a nice update rate and are enough samples to draw many lines. We also need to set a good time period. I use the split screen mode to see the time period where my drawing is happening and zoom in as far as possible not cutting anything off. Now back to full screen. Zoom in X and Y and done. And that was the simple version. Of course I could end the video and release something like that every two days. But that's probably not why you are here. So let's get sophisticated. I've written a sketch which can display pixel lines and even 3D point clouds and meshes. To get the meshes from STL into the code I have also written a small converter to generate a header file containing the geometry. You can also find it on the project page. I put all the math and drawing in some helping classes and displaying the object is as simple as that. These 3D meshes consist of thousands of vertices and lines so performance is really important. I measured the count of samples I could write per second and it was not very impressive. 260k samples per second is ok to render audio but not 3D meshes. I took a look in the sources of the driver function and since the sources are open I saw some potential there. The function uses a mutex to prevent other functions to interrupt it. It also disables the internal cosine generator. We don't need to do this every single sample, so I decided to move it out of the drawing loop as a prepare and unprepare function. That worked ok, the new code was 3 times faster. But I went a level deeper and saw there was a read operation involved to preserve the other bits of the register responsible for that duck. Creating this bit mask could also be moved outside the loop. And the improvement was sick. It reached almost 7 million samples per second. I couldn't believe it, so I checked the scope if it's even doing anything. The optimized function is now 26 times faster. The read operation is probably killing the processor's cache, since it is a hardware register. I don't know for sure, but I know it works great. I also understand why the driver is implemented like that. It has to work in any situation. But sometimes it's totally worth to take a deeper look. Gorgeous. Enough of 3D. Let's take a look how we can display a camera image in real time. In the last episode we had the i squared s camera working. But the possibilities to display the images really sucked. I wanted something with more frames per second, so I kinda simulated an old CRT display on the oscilloscope. I captured a triple QVGA YUV image from the camera and walked through the frame pixel by pixel. If the grayscale part of the pixel was dark, I set the XY values on the darks to be outside the frame to get a black pixel. Otherwise I set the XY to the coordinates of the pixel in the image and left it there for some microseconds corresponding to the brightness of the pixel. The longer the dot stays at the same spot, the brighter it gets. Et voila! A simple and fast display. In the split screen view you can see that the rendering takes longer when the image is brighter. And that's it. That was an awesome and fun project, I hope you liked it as well. Thanks to all my supporters and also thanks to Banggood for sending me that scope. See you next time, bye!